Hey friends, Peggy Hall back with you from the healthyamerican.org. Who are Israel's biggest military uh, contributors? That's what we're going to look at. And I'm going to share my screen. We're going to dive right in. Take a look at this uh, graph that I have here for you. The top recipients of USA between 1946 and 2023, 287 billion with a B, 287 billion dollars have gone to Israel. Egypt is the second top recipient of USAID getting 168 billion. Ukraine didn't even make this list. Afghanistan has gotten 158 billion. Vietnam, I'm astonished, has gotten 144. And we are actually giving money to Iraq, 98 billion dollars. How do you like them apples? Them are pretty rotten apples, especially when we need that money in the United States. That's your tax money that has been stolen out of your paycheck going to these countries. Now, I got this information from the Washington Compost. Yes, that's what it's called. They have a tagline that says democracy dies in darkness. They're calling our country a democracy. You know, and I know that it's a uh, constitutional republic, but I thought that this was a very interesting article, and I will leave a link for you in my Substack, which is peggyhall.substack.com. So, who are the uh, who are Israel's uh, Israeli military's biggest suppliers? Now, let's take a look at the countries. Let me know in a comment below who you think follows the United States in terms of giving money to Israel. Let's have a little quiz here. So, I'll give you a tip. It is in Europe. Okay, it's not Canada, but I'm going to talk about Canada in just a moment. We're going to talk about the countries that are footing the bill for this, um, I don't know, should we just call it genocide? And then the countries that have said, we're going to put a stop on this until things get sorted out. So who do you think is footing the bill and who do you think has put a stop to the money? All right, the United States is number one, of course. And that is, uh, let me just get to my info here. I showed you how much that is. And there's been a lot of controversy now because of Netanyahu's uh, highly unpopular policy of killing innocent civilians and having them leave their homes, destroying their homes, and basically, I don't know, perpetrating, how do you call it, uh, ethnic cleansing, sort of like what Germany did to the Jews. I mean, they're like, reliving it. Yeah, I'm just speaking uh, bluntly here. So uh, very, very interesting. The number two country after the United States is, speaking of Germany, Germany. <laughs> this is so interesting to me. Germany is the second biggest supplier to Israelis military. Uh, the estimates say that Israel imports about 30% of its arms from German manufacturers. And it apparently the German leaders feel some type of historical responsibility, um, citing Germany's responsibility arising from what happened in the war. So uh, Germany though, to its credit, says that the about 90% of its exports, let's say 98% of its ex exports authorized after the war were not for war weapons, but they were for other military equipment, such as um, helmets, communications equipment, but it's all used in the war, friends. How does the expression go, make love, not war? Hey, you want to bat it out? How about getting Netanyahu with the leader of Hamas, put them in the cage fight and made the worst man lose, win? How can I put that? I'm not in favor of everybody else stepping up to bat for these guys. All right. Uh, yes, here we go. Um, Germany has only licensed four war weapons for export since the October uh, debacle and said that they were for test or practice equipment. And I'm sure we can trust Germany. And uh, they also transferred 3000 portable anti-tank weapons came from Germany. Berlin, Germany has approved the export of 500,000 rounds of ammunition for machine guns, submachine guns, and other fully automatic or semi-automatic bang bangs, and said, oh, they're just intended for training purposes. Of course, none of those rounds of ammunition have resulted in the murder of innocents. I'm sure not at all. So Germany can have uh, a clear conscience, can't it? All right, who do you think is up next in the uh, military race to give military aid to Israel? This was stunning to me. I would have thought it was Canada or Britain. It's actually Italy. That's so interesting. Italy was the third largest 
global exporter of arms to Israel between 2019 and 2023, accounting for just about 1% of Israel's imports in the period. And uh, however, Italy did say that in late 2023, perhaps in response to everything that's going on, that the government had stopped sending weapons to Israel. However, some arms exports did continue. And Italy said, well, we're just honoring previous um, purchase orders. So there's that, honoring their obligation. All righty. Britain is number four. And uh, the last information I could find was from 2022. And Britain exported uh, over $50 million worth of military equipment to Israel. There was a legal challenge to stop that, um, but because many people want Britain to stop supplying all of this killing, but it's still going on. All right, who has stopped? This is very interesting. I mentioned Canada previously. Canada has not approved any arms export permits to Israel since January 8th. And they said that they're going to pause until it can uh, be assured of Israel's full compliance with export controls. Now, I don't know if that's code word for you know, like stop killing innocent people. Like that would be a good step in the right direction. Um, Spain said that they are not authorizing any further arms sales to Israel. I had no idea that all these countries are actually supplying Israel with these killing machines. Uh, so since the war broke out, Spain said, we are not approving anymore. And um, except for the ones that were approved prior to the war. So again, let, let's just honor those purchase orders. <laughs> okay. In the Netherlands, a court in February ordered the government to suspend the export of F-35 fighter jets I had no idea that the Netherlands were even producing fighter jets and the parts, I should say, fighter jet parts to Israel. And they said that there are concerns, very serious concerns, which I share over violations of international humanitarian law. And so there have been lawsuits that were brought in the Netherlands and the Dutch uh, government is actually appealing that and wants to continue to provide in uh, these uh, exports to Israel. So just a short video, friends. I thought it was very interesting how much money, billions and billions and billions of dollars going to Israel and then also going to Iraq and also going to Afghanistan, I guess, you know, post-war and also going to Vietnam, probably also some kind of post-war deal and um, also going to Egypt. So I guess that would be called covering your bets, right? giving money to both sides. I do not see uh, any aid here in terms of um, economic and military aid going to Iran. And I wanted to bring this to you as a second video. I did do some coverage just digging beneath the headlines in terms of Israel miraculously being able to stop 98% of these incoming missiles that I could not find any video of. Uh, yet they were asleep at the wheel on October 7th. Yeah, I'm never going to let that rest, friends. That's called critical thinking and digging deeper. And for those that believe that uh, Israel has a right to wipe off an entire population off the face of the map, all I can say is I'm going to pray for your discernment and to dig deeper. See you in the next video, friends. Tomorrow, I've got the coverage for you about the Baltimore corruption and crime connection to Nancy Pelosi and her family. I did a few tidbits on that earlier, and I will let you know that I had some technical difficulty with that video, so it's kind of a, a two-parter, but you'll see when you watch it tomorrow. I appreciate having you on board. Get all that you need in terms of the written analysis over at my Substack, peggyhall.substack.com. See you soon, everybody.